Okay, good morning everyone. My name's Dean, for those don't, that don't know me. Um, I work out at Western Water, but I'm also involved with the IWN program for leak detection, condition assessment and infiltration. This is a technical term for our works in progress. So it's a water industry thing. So just to give you an update on a few different projects that we're working on. So the eye tracker is a Western Water sponsored project. And what it's designed to do is look at flows within the sewer network and the focus is around inflow and infiltration. I'm not too sure how you can see these dots up the back here, but the red dots are our full-time ADS flow meters. So we're normally looking for inflow and infiltration with those flow meters. And what we've done is we've inserted these devices into different parts of the sewer system. Part of the validation process that we're using, you can see that we put an eye tracker next to one of our permanent monitors. So we'll check what sort of volumes of sewer pass both devices to check for its accuracy. There's another little device located here. That's grabbing a new estate. So we want to have a look at the new estates and see if we've got any issues around II before we actually inherit those assets. So that's underway at the moment and I'm hoping in the next two to three weeks I'll collect some data. But going off previous history is every time I put a device like this to look for II in the sewer, I could almost generate a drought. So I need a rainfall event. So I've got my fingers and toes crossed that we get one in the next couple of weeks. Otherwise this trial will go a bit, bit longer. I'm um, the smart sewer lid, so a few people will be familiar with this. I've had a lot of interest from the water industry around this device. And this is looking at movement of the sewer lid, uh, H2S sensors, flow monitoring, and it's connected to Telstra's MBIOT. So part of the delay with this project is I don't know if anyone's re called Telstra recently for a fault. Uh, you're normally on the line for a while. I'm having a few difficulties just trying to get this across the line. But the key thing will be testing this uh, communication device under a lid. So I'm hoping that we'll get the first lid out at Western Water in December. And we're not doing that to be greedy and be the first one. But normally I have some teething problems when I roll out a new, new technology of any description. So I'd like to iron that out at Western Water before I go to the next water corporation. I'm not too sure how many water corporations have issues around adduction plans, but it's definitely a big issue for us at Western Water. Plenty of growth out in our area. Um, our rock, rock bank uh, growth precedent is just you know, developing so quickly. So the problem that we've got is that we've got more adduction plans, a lot more traffic at the treatment plants. The treatment plants weren't uh, designed to have large trucks going through so frequently and we've got one plant that it can accept the waste. So what we're looking at is something similar to the smart sewer lid. And what we want is that we've got some technology around the adduction point so that we can measure the volume of waste that's been adducted from the new development. And then rather than cart that waste all the way to the treatment plant, we want to find the nearest suitable spot in the network and put some smarts around a adduction point. And what the contractor can do is uh, drop off that waste at a suitable manhole, and what we want to do is measure the flow. So just say they took out 10,000 litres from the adduction point, we'd expect that there'd be 10,000 litres getting dropped off at the next point. We also want to monitor pH, so pH will detect whether there's any septic loads in the tank, so we don't want to collect septic loads, we just want to know that they grabbed fresh sewer from one point, dropped it at the other point and we'll have some uh, locking systems that can specify which contractor grabbed the waste at what point in time and also drop that off. So I'm not too sure how many people have got similar issues but I'd be interested in, in hearing back from you if you do. I talk about this stuff at home, no one's interested, so maybe in this <laughs> forum uh, it might relate to someone. Um, the Nautilus system, so I'm gonna steal your thunder here, Brock. So this is something that City West Water has been driving um, what it is, is it's a pretty much a ball that can be inserted via an air valve and also collected via an air valve as well with a net. And what it does is it'll pick up leaks or any anomalies and the anomalies could be things like air pockets. It's suitable for the water system or also sewer rising mains. So I'll be working closely with Brock to see whether we can pull this in as a bit of an IWN program. And the thing that I'll remind this group about is that there's a lot of leverage about using the IWN as part of your trials and your negotiations. So from a commercial front, um, Mike Walsh was a big driver on that front for me. And he said, you know, when these companies are coming and talking to you, if you're just dealing with it as City West Water or Western Water or someone else, 
um, you're just a single identity. But when you're talking about IWN and putting it under that umbrella, then you're talking on behalf of the Victorian industry. And I talk to these companies and say, how long would it take you to go and meet all the different Victorian water corporations? And if you're so confident with your technology, how would you sell that back to the industry? Whereas if you use that IWN umbrella, there's a lot of benefits for them, but then we can expect some benefits in the price as well. So just keep that in the back of your head, that you can do some commercial negotiations and probably get a better deal if you talk about IWN. Um, I've been approached from Smart Creek CRC, Cooperative Research Centre, around concrete structures, and they're very keen to have IWN contribution to that. And it could be anything. So they're asking, normally they start with dollars, but they can end up with in-kind support. And what this is around is the longevity of concrete structures within the industry, not just the water industry, but across all industries. So there's been some interest from Sydney Water, Melbourne Water, and I thought I'll throw it out there today to see if anyone's you know, on their edge of their seat about this topic, because they're more than welcome to get involved, and they're very keen to have us involved as well. Um, another project that I'm working on with Latrobe Uni, I've got Rob and Alex here, is around Australian Research Council linkage grant. So it's just another alternative for funding these projects. In hindsight, this would have been handy for a couple of projects that we've worked together on, the concrete sewer pipe tester, the SAPA. But anyway, we thought we'll just put our hat in the ring. What they offer is they'll match any cash contribution and in-kind support. So just say you were to offer, I don't know, $10,000 cash for a trial, and $40,000 in-kind support, they would match you $50,000. So it sounds good, but we'll see whether this one comes off or not. I guess you've got to be in it to, to win it. This device here is the concrete sewer pipe testing device. This was built um, with our colleagues at La Trobe University. It was designed to look at concrete sewer pipe structures, penetrate the roof, and look for H2S damage. It would check that test against a brand new concrete pipe and work out the remaining life cycle. The good news for me is that this pipe's in Bacchus Marsh, it was due for replacement, and after conducting this test, it proved that there's a lot more life in it. So we didn't have to replace that pipe, so we got a direct benefit for that. Then I need to acknowledge South East Water, so they want to take it to the next level. So this pipe testing device that we built would just penetrate the roof. It was designed for up to 300 millimetres in diameter, and South East Water will take it up to 1,200 millimetres in diameter. The other thing that they'll do is rather than just penetrate the roof is that they'll look at different sections of the pipe. So we'll be very interested to see what those results are. And there's been some additional modifications about making it wireless as well. So I'll keep you posted on the progress there. So I've talked about what's been in progress and I'll now discuss what's been completed over the last six months. So water NAMIC, so that sits in the big data section of the IWN program, but Western Water was privileged enough to be involved in that trial that started in November 2017. It was a 12-month trial, so it got us to November 2018. The only issue for us with the trial was the integration part. So I've had a big lesson in life around integrating IT systems. It's not like building robots and things like that. It takes a lot longer and a lot more technical. So we spent 12 months on the integration, so we couldn't really work out the benefit. Now we're heading for 2019, so we've had this in place for 12 months. So we're going through that uh, business case benefits realisation, and we're also looking at artificial intelligence. So the little map here is just looking at our sewer system with points of interest, and what it can do is it can predict over, well, we've got there 2020, it can go to 20. 25, 2030, and then what we'll do is we can target our CCTV programs with that information. For those that don't know what Waterdynamics is about, it's a dashboard of multiple systems. So previously, prior to Waterdynamics, if we had a call that went into our operations centre, someone would look at our CRM and say, uh, Cameron, yep, here's his details in there, then they go to the GIS, then they go to our mobility tool, then they go to SCADA. And from a customer's experience, they're waiting on the line while we're fossicking through these different databases. Waterdynamics is a dashboard for all of those uh, databases. In addition to that, it's also got our GPS system. So if Ben rang up and said, oh, I'm living at so-and-so street and I've got a pit that's leaking out the front of my place, rather than us fossicking through all these different databases, we've got it all there in front of us. And we go, oh, geez, that's a sewer pit and that's leaking, so that's not good. We jump on there, we've got all our vehicles tracked. We can say, um, 
Dean's the closest vehicle and we can send him there quicker. So we've got a, a really good customer experience out of this and we've also got a lot of benefits around time and efficiencies. I'll just quickly touch on the WIO and Network Operator Development Program. So we've been fortunate enough to be involved with that program for the fourth year now. Um, we offer three training modules there. So one is the uh, IWN program as a whole, so as an introduction. Uh, one is on water network and technology, and the other one's on sewer network and technology. So normally we get a lot of feedback, there's a lot of enthusiasm around what the IWN's doing, and it's really just sharing that information back at the grassroots. It's also encouraging them, while it's easy to say, oh, I don't know about the IWN, is to go and find out who their champion is in their business and be proactive about that information. The other thing that I offer to this group too is about signing up for the, um, our newsletter to get a lot of information that way. So we're still on for um, next year as well. Uh, the next one is the Aqua P. So I've got a few Aqua P's, I'll pass them around. Um, I'm not putting a video up of myself just because I like looking at myself and it's not my um, casting video for Home and Away. But normally when I show the Aqua P videos, it's normal, normally their commercial videos, so their products, their videos. And what I wanted to show this group was the trial. So we're out at Western Waters Training Facility. What I'm going to do is drop a P in on the, it would be the customer side of the meter. I'm just giving it a spray of 4% hypo, so anything that we put into a water main, we normally spray it. Having said that, no customer's tapped off this. So I've put the P in there. I'm sweating at this stage, making sure it works, because we're videoing it, and normally there's a crowd. But you can see the size of the leak there. So this P has travelled through a 20 mil pipeline, found the leak, and then plugged it. So I'll share that, you can have a look at it. I'm not on commission for peas or anything like that. But it was just an interesting tool and what we thought, or where we thought we could use something like this, is maybe at a customer's property. So every now and again we come across a customer with hardship issues and they've got the $2,000 water bill. They're paying that and they can't afford to fix it. This might be a, an easy temporary fix. The other thing from a network operations point of view, a service leak under a road normally pops up on a Sunday. Maybe we can drop a pee in there buy some time, come back later, do the bore, renew the service. So we'll see how that goes. There's some uh, details around the trials and what we'll do is we'll just continue to add to that list. How much are they um, $60 for you. <laughs> and $60 for everyone else too. But This is a standard slide for me. Normally at these conferences, especially last night, you can feel the energy in the group. Um, Ben's talked about involvement, Brett's talked about discretionary effort and I'll just throw it out there again is that nothing happens on your own, it's all about we and what we can do. So I'll throw this out to the group, if you're feeling motivated, you want to run a trial in your water corporation, let me know. If you want to get involved in managing a trial, the skills that you'll learn out of that is managing projects into other water corporations. If you think you've got issues managing stuff at your own workplace, try and manage it into someone else's water corporation adds other levels of complexity. But if that excites you, just yell out because you know I'm more than happy to share some knowledge or projects or anything. So I'll throw that out there as a, as a standard slide. And then what I'm gonna do is the SAPA device, I won't talk too much about it, I'll hand it over to my colleagues at uh, La Trobe University. So I've got Rob and Alex, and what we're gonna do is just spend a couple of minutes on doing a handover for this device. We use the same technology for the concrete sewer pipe testing and developed this device for testing manholes. So you can lower it down, penetrate the wall, um, prioritise the works that you want to do. And we're also fortunate to uh, be able to present at Oswater as well. So I'll hand it over to Rob and Alex to give us a quick demo about what this device is about. And then at the end of this, if you think you've got a need in your water corporation, well, yell out. Because the last thing that I want is this to sit in the shed at Western Water. We really need to push this thing out and it's an industry tool. So it'd be great if someone says, yeah, yeah, I've got a need, and then you can take this thing and just start using it. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks, Dean. Uh, so my name's Rob, and Alex is here as well. He'll be giving a demo of the system in, in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but ba the basic idea is we know H2S is an issue. We've got robots that can go through um, the actual sewers, but these ones will go through the sewer access points. Um, basically, rather than doing a visual inspection or something like that, it allows us to have a probe that will probe into the sewer and it will stop when it hits something solid. You know, 
about 50 newtons or so. It, it hits the solid concrete behind a, a H2S affected area and it'll stop. It's got a load cell on the end of it, which is here. You'll see it in the demo. And that tells us how much force is being applied. And it's got encoders in there that tell us how far it's actually extended in. So it'll tell us how much degradation we've got, how far we've actually penetrated into the outer wall of that sewer. Uh, we've got um, extensions on there, so you can adapt it to different sized sewers. And it's all driven wirelessly via a mobile phone, which uh, records all the data, allows you to take a photo, and stores it as a CSV file, so you can upload all your data and things like that. Um, also gets the GPS location of, and allows you to enter in where your asset is and things like that. So designed that you can uh, take your data and actually use it uh, as part of your system as well. So Alex will give a, a brief demo of how it actually works. Yeah. And um, we'll be around during morning tea as well if you want to have a play with it too. So yeah, um, this is Sapper. Uh, it's got a uh, normal phone which has an app on it which connects to uh, the Wi-Fi which is on board the, the, the robot itself. Uh, it's all battery operated so uh, it does need a charge every now and then. Um, but it estimates to do about 200, 300 tests. Um, you have two of them so if you do want to go out and get some data you Got access to two of them as well. Um, yeah, like I said, it's got a load cell at the front, um, an encoder which tells how far it's actually penetrated into the wall. Um, usually, most assets are pretty good. You know, won't get much penetration, but if you do have a, um, a bad one, then that provides some pretty interesting data. Uh, so it's not, it's not really uh, much to look at apart from going out. Um, this is at a medium speed, so it does go faster. And so once it starts to feel that it's hit the wall, it'll slow down and then it will uh, ramp up to 50 newton meters. Okay? Um, so we find 50 newtons is pretty much a good end, end point. Gives you a good amount of um, data. Pretty hard. It'll stop. It'll store the distance and the load into the um, app, and then you can download that as a CSV file later on. Um, it's probably best to come and have a look at the app during the tea time just to see what how it works and how to operate it. Don't worry, this hasn't been down a sewer pipe, so it's nice and clean. <laughs> um, but hopefully, that changes in the near future. Uh, so yeah, once the, once the test has been done, you can retract and then go and test another point. So it's just a matter of the operator moving it around. Um, there is a safe operating procedure as well, which I think was a Western Water that developed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there is some ones. instructions around how to operate this safely um, that I'd probably recommend that we come out for the first couple tests just to sort of train off the operators and, and uh, provide some information.